So my name is Ruslan Bukin. I'm working in the University of Cambridge Computer Laboratory. I'm working on the projects around uh, ARM Morello SOC, mostly covering uh, basic platform support, but also doing some cherry bits. Um, so, uh, one, uh, I, um, so I initially I made support for IOMMU for this platform and uh, SCMI, and I wrote uh, display controller drivers and uh, GPU, ARM Mali GPU Panfrost driver. And uh, in January, I was looking what else I could work on. Like, I was looking what uh, peripheral support we are missing in the ARM Morello SOC. And I found that we are missing uh, a hardware trace unit that is included to the ARM Morello SOC. Um, <clears throat> so I found that we don't have any framework in FreeBSD that could cover such kind of technologies, like hardware trace technologies. And I decided to start a new project, which is called HWT. So I plan to talk about HWT today, and uh, at the end, I plan to show a demo. So. Just to start, this is a first ever produced Morello board. It was shipped directly to my house where I was working on display controller drivers and GPU driver. I also wrote PCI Express driver for this platform and probably something else that I forgot to, to mention. A few months later, I was playing Doom on our Morello board with 3D acceleration. Um, this is available on the YouTube on my channel, as, as long as some other videos. Um, by the way, other, my other contributions to FreeBSD include uh, RISC-5, ISA support that I did in 2015, and also Intel SGX support for x86, and lots of drivers for FreeBSD. But today I'll be talking about HWT, about tracing. So there are a few tracing technologies available in uh, modern CPUs. I believe every mobile and every laptop in this room has at least one of these technologies. So we are talking about Intel processor trace, which is a x86 technology uh, present on a every modern uh, Intel CPU, I think. I think it's available since uh, Broadwell, uh, which is 2016, I think, 2014, and Apollo Lake, which is Intel Pentium, uh, Teleron CPUs. Um, there's also ARM Core SI technology that I found in ARM Morello SOC. It is quite old technology introduced uh, like 24 years ago. And there are many, many generations and versions of that. And also ARM statistical profile annexation that is also present in ARM Morello and uh, probably all modern uh, ARM64 CPUs. There are probably more technologies that I'm not aware of. So this tree is what I'm currently looking at. So uh, let's talk about main uh, principle, principle of operation. So basically, this kind of technologies, they collect information about software execution and store it into DRAM in a highly compressed format. They, st they store it as this information as uh, e events. So it's like a packet which is also called an event. And these events, they uh, basically covers everything about software execution and uh, the information that they store it into the DRAM, uh, it is supposed that it will be enough for you to restore entire program flow of, the, of your application. So every time your application make a branch, like uh, calling a function, jumping somewhere, this event will be stored into DRAM in a very small amount of data. Um, basically, uh, all exceptions, all interrupts, 
uh, you can configure this tracing units to also include timestamps. Like you can specify uh, how often do you want to see these timestamps into the trace. And also you can insert this, the events uh, by yourself in a, from a software if you want. And uh, for every branch taken, there will be, or taken or not taken, there will be one bit of information stored into DRAM. And well, your application makes lots of lots of jumps and branches, and uh, your like space in DRAM could be filled up very quickly. Like you can get, if you enable lots of these events, uh, like gigabytes of uh, information per second store it into DRAM. So I'm, I, also, I only done support for the ARM core side. Intel process trace and statistical profile and extension, this is currently that we are looking at with contributors to the HWMT framework. So the um, core side subsystem is quite large. It, will, it, it did require to write a separate framework just for a core side because it consists of uh, multiple components. There are several devices that every, uh, each of devices require like a separate driver and uh, these devices attaches on ACPI, flight device tree bus. So every device is described in your, in your device tree source file or ACPI table. And this is just a simple example how the data flow could uh, um, go like uh, the embedded trace macro cell device, which is part of the core side uh, IP uh, per each core is producing the trace and then trace is collected and uh, funneled into the single stream. So all uh, traces from every CPU will be sent to the single buffer by using a funnel device. And then they could be replicated uh, to the several output uh, devices. It could be output to the external port or to the uh, TMC controller, which is a device that receives data and stores it to the DRAM. And this is very simplified uh, pipeline. Uh, the pipeline depends on your system on crystal. It could be much larger, it could be several replicators, several funnels. All of these devices and the interconnection is described in the device tree source. So you have to build the entire pipeline before you can actually use it. So I mean that if you want to enable tracing on core side, you have to first enable and configure your TMC, set up the buffers where you want this traces, tracing to be put. Then you want to go to replicator, set up it, enable it. Then we go to funnels, enable it. And then you go to embedded trace macro cell for every CPU that you're interested in. You also enable it, flash caches, and uh, do the other stuff. So <laughs> this is like a separate framework that is already committed to FreeBSD. Uh, I did this like a few years ago, looking at the, uh, another project, but it is not in use currently because we didn't have a framework. Um, And this TMC component of core side, it has bugs. So I'm currently working not with the latest version of core side, I think version four, which is uh, originally uh, produced in 2015, but uh, they have a minor versions of it. So I'm working with uh, ARM core side, like uh, probably about 2018. Uh, and uh, the problem with that, TMC component that it doesn't have any interrupt line. So you are filling your buffers, you run your application, and uh, once your put buffers filled up and they filled up quite quickly, you will not be interrupted. And the hardware start of uh, writing the buffers from the beginning. So this is how <laughs> ARM Core side TMC works. Uh, they fixed these bugs in the latest version, so in latest SOCs that will be interrupt line provided. But in my case, I don't have it. Um, and also Linux also support doesn't, have, doesn't use any interrupt line on uh, ARM core side tracing units. So 
So what the solution could be here? Well, we could allocate very large buffers. Like this technology supports scatter gather operation, so we could allocate as much as we want. Like we can allocate gigabytes of memory, like if you have them. Um, and I forgot to say that uh, there is actually no way to stop the tracing. So if you tracing a single application, a single thread of the application, if, if you enable tracing um, when the application switches into the CPU, and then you will like want to pause the tracing when you, the scheduler switches your application out from CPU, but the TMC doesn't allow you that. So you, it, it will be stopped, and you will not be able to uh, continue tracing from some point, in some place in the DRAM. So Linux do some workarounds for these problems. I didn't go that much. I just uh, allocating a large pieces of data of memory that is, and like supposedly be enough for my buffers. Uh, for my applications, and uh, this, I think it works. Intel processor trace is much better technology that I, I was looking at it uh, uh, previously, and it has completely independent pipeline, so CPU takes a trace and puts it to DRAM directly, immediately, without any, uh, uh, funnel on it or replicating it anywhere. And this allows us to allow multiple users to trace um, multiple applications at the same time. And unlike uh, ARM Core side, this is not memory mapped peripheral. So if you want to enable tracing setup you pointers to the buffers, you do this by issuing uh, CPU instructions. So you have to issue CPU instructions on the CPU that you want to enable tracing for. Again, the technology is very similar to ARM Core side. You basically set up which packets do you want, and the type of packets are roughly the same. You want, for example, to see where, you branch, you, where your application branches to, so you want to enable target IP event, and it will be stored to DRAM by, using, by Intel PT. And it also can store taken or not taken branches, and uh, Using PT write command, you can write any data you want from your application, and pretty much everything will be stored to as events to DRAM, including power state, entry, exit, and all exceptions, all interrupts, non-maskable interrupts, pretty much everything. And the third technology is ARM statistical profiling station extension. Uh, and this is a bit different because uh, it uses statistical approach. So it's like uh, s sampling profile approach. Uh, like while the previous two technologies, they store gigabytes of data per second, this is different. Um, this will uh, make a sample, like you can set up what time, what the delay you want to have between samples. And uh, this technology, uh, allows you to detect some varied usage, varied cache usage patterns like uh, false sharing uh, uh, problems. Like when you uh, work with different data, but this data use the same cache line. This is quite new technology introduced recently in RV8.2. It's optional technology, so it may not present in every SOC. Uh, also, let, uh, let's compare this to the HDL and PMC. Because with HDL PMC, for example, you want to, you can uh, see how much, for example, cache operations like cache misses occurred while your application run, and you can find the place where the um, cache uh, is used as most. But with HDL PC, you'll not be able to find uh, 
what that data is actually your place in the kernel or anywhere is accessing to. So you'll find the place in the, in the code where this uh, situation happens, but you will not be able to find the place what's actually destination of load stores where this uh, data goes to. So the kernel support, I started in January. I think it takes for me like six months. I'm currently already on another project, working on another project, but entire support is about 3.5 lines of code. And um, uh, similar to HDL PMC, we had to install some kernel hooks, like uh, for MMAP, we need to know where the dynamic libraries, for example, of user space applications are mapped to. So we need to catch this uh, information and store it somewhere. We also need to ensure we get notifications when a, when a new thread is created for the applications that we are tracing currently, uh, or if some new kernel module is loaded and when scheduler switches in our application to a CPU so we can enable tracing and switches out so we can disable tracing. And uh, all this bunch of hooks that are very similar to HDL PMC hooks uh, have to be installed in the kernel. And uh, HDL and T uh, have a character device dev HDLT that is basically allow allowing you to uh, set up the tracing. It allows you basically just one operation to create a tracing context. And obviously, this platform supports, this framework supports multiple uh, backends at the same time. So if you have it on both Cori side and a statistical profiling extension, they both could be registered in the framework. So with character device dev HWT, you're basically creating uh, a software context of the, of your, of your uh, tracing application, of your tracing session. And there are two modes of operation, which is, which is similar to HDL PMC. We have tracing and thread mode uh, that allowing us to trace uh, any given application in user space and be able to trace uh, any particular thread of the application. And also a CPU mode. So we dynamically, once a context uh, session, context, uh, HDL PMC context created, we dynamically uh, create a new character device that is allowing us to manage this tracing session. So in thread mode, we will be HDL T underscore uh, the I, uh, unique ident, ID, identification that is uh, created by the kernel and the thread ID. So you could, uh, when you're tracing your application, you can uh, then decode tracing for any, any uh, given uh, thread that you are interested in. And in CPU mode, we are basically tracing whatever CPU activity in kernel mode. So it will be a new character device created, HDLT underscore uh, CPU, the CPU ID that we are interested in. Obviously, we can enable tracing for all the CPUs, but it will be a lot of data. And once uh, this uh, character device is created, you could uh, obviously um, memory map the buffers into the user space. And uh, you could also issue, I issue IOCTLs on that char character devices to control your tracing session. Like you can start the tracing, you can get records that are basically information that is collected by using hooks. Like if some libraries map it somewhere, uh, you can um, receive this information into the user space that will allow you to make a simple lookup in the IP addresses uh, that is collected by the hardware. You can also set configuration because these technologies, they uh, obviously ev every technology has its own kind of configuration, lots of lots of registers that you can configure for your particular case uh, in a kernel and uh, we could not make like a uh, like general approach here because 
there's lots, lots of uh, registers um, and lots of configuration bits that you can set. And um, you could also, uh, using IFTLs, read the current pointer in the buffer. So the hardware is filling the buffer, like your gigabyte of buffer, and you could see where the hardware is currently filling the buffer, in which place. So you could take it all previous place from the buffer and, for example, analyze it. And then you take the pointer again and see how much further it go and take the second chunk of memory and uh, process it. And there is another call called IOC wake up. It's basically made to wake up the threads that are put to sleep. So the problem is that when we start in our application and we want to do a simple lookup, we actually don't know where uh, runtime linker mapped our libraries and our main executable to. So we couldn't actually configure the tracing you need. For example, if you want to limit the range, like uh, set up IP range filtering, like if you don't want to trace entire application, but maybe you want to trace just single function, we need to know where our executable are actually mapped in the virtual address space and uh, set config for this particular RP range that we're interested in. So this uh, special function of the HDL key is that put our target application to sleep on every mmap request. So when you start an application, it does lots of mmaps to mmap all the libraries, sleep C, all the stuff that is using. And every time it, it is doing that, we will, is putting it to sleep. Then we collect information and ship it to user space. So user space could figure out what actually to do. Is it information provided is enough for us to start tracing or do we need a more, do we expect more uh, MMAP calls to uh, configure IP range filtering and continue tracing for our application? So the tracing session is stored in the struct HDLT context that pretty much contain everything about the mode of operation, about everything about our session. Like when a thread created of our target application, we allocate or, or, or runtime uh, buffers for it, and we create a new HDLT thread and we store it, in the store it into the tracing context. Also, information about the backend that is actually used, like Coresite, the statistical profile extension on Intel PT. Uh, in case of uh, CPU mode, the stores, stores uh, CPU structs, like some information as well, like buffers, CPU ID, and other stuff. So everywhere we operate with this HDLT context. And obviously, you can make multiple contexts at the same time as run, uh, when you trace in the application, or you, uh, multiple users could actually make different sessions and uh, we also um, create uh, several hash tables that allow us to quickly look up a context. For example, if scheduler want to switch uh, an application to a CPU, and we, at this time, we need to check if we actually have tracing context configured to trace this application. So we made a quickly uh, HDLT context hash lookup with the key uh, of uh, address of the actually struct proc in, in 3 busy. And we can quickly see if a tracing session is configured for that. And if it's configured, we can ch check the mode of the tra trace session and enable a uh, specific backend, uh, set up buffers and all that stuff. And we also maintain the owner hash, which is um, uh, similar hash with HDLT owner struct, which is um, basically information about the application that is uh, requesting that trace session. So if that application dies for some reason, we could uh, clean up everything quickly in the kernel, so uh, don't store something that we don't need. So this framework, obviously, it requires not just uh, kernel support, but also user space instrumentation tools. And um, these tools, they, uh, so what we need from them? We need to basically 
specify what application we want to trace, like which what mode of operation. We want to stop address range filtering, and we need to use specific for this platform trace decoder. And uh, we need actually to start our, to fork our uh, application and uh, to manage this process. And also, if you want, like, to make the output human readable form, we actually need to make also symbol lookup so we could see what IP, current IP, like, that is stored by hardware to DRAM, uh, what function name it corresponds to. So I made this HWT uh, user space application that is doing all that stuff. And there are two decoders. I'm not sure about decoder for the um, ARM statistical profiling extension, but for the ARM core site, it's ARM open CSD, large decoder written on C++. And also for the Intel processor trace, it is Intel lib IPT. Both of them I already com committed to the contrib directory. So they, I think, already built uh, when you build a, uh, a kernel. I'm not sure about that. They are not used currently because the framework is not yet in um, FreeBSD based system. So here are a few examples, like we could uh, just start tracing for the uname application. Or let's say we are interested in the main function of the uname application, which is second example. In this case, HWT instrumentation tool will fork the uname. It will receive information from kernel where this uname is mapped to, where its library is mapped to, where the main executable is mapped to and uh, it will set up address range filtering in the hardware, so hardware does not put everything to the DRAM, that all information that we do not not interested in, and it will enable tracing only for this particular IP range, and then we could uh, have much less data to analyze. Obviously, we could m trace all the dynamic libraries that are linked with our application we could also trace in kernel mode, specifying which CPU IDs we want to trace. Like for example, in this example, we want to trace CPU ID zero and CPU ID two, and we want to trace CPU switch function that is scheduler uh, calls when it wants to switch threads. Obviously, we can also trace kernel modules. In this example, we are tracing if IVM and a function named packet takes. So what's current status? Uh, ARM core site is fully functional, it works. I actually uh, like it. Um, and uh, my colleague in ARM, Zachary Leaf, is working on statistical profiling station support for this platform. So ARM officially supports this framework and uh, Zachary uh, working half time uh, to bring SP support to the HWT. So we have a second um, uh, tracing technology supported. And I think he already reported that he has uh, CPU mode support. So not a thread mode, but we already able to profile in a CPU mode in kernel. Um, Intel PT work is just started by Boyan. Uh, he, uh, I met him on Coimbra and he said that he's interested to support this and he just wrote me a, an email recently uh, informing that he started to look at this uh, Intel PT work and I provided to Boyan some snippets uh, that I made uh, previously. So this work is on review currently. The patch is quite large. Uh, so I think it will be on review for a while, maybe when we uh, add SP as well to the review, maybe some more people will be interested in that, hopefully. And now I am ready to show a demo.
So here I just log it into the Cherry BSD system. It's uh, working on Arm Morella in my office in England. So here's the instrumentation to LegendLT. I just my uh, issue to make. And uh, as you see, it builds HDLT core site, module, some processing files, ELF, uh, and link it with open CSD decoder, libxo. Uh, and we are also using libpmc start library to make a symbol lookup. So I'm running. Uh, HWT, and let's say I want to trace your name, user bin your name. Command not found. Here it is. So we receive three records from kernel, like it is informing us that libc is address where it's mapped to, runtime linker, and the main executable. With this information, we could make symbol lookup. Like we get IP addresses from, uh, IP addresses of, bran of uh, branches where the, our application is branches to. So this PCs is basically place where our uh, control flow changes to. And using symbol lookup, we can see that this is DL iterate with offset 184. So this is where our application started to work. And it started with runtime linker. So there is lots and lots of stuff that runtime linker is doing, like some calculating some digest dynamic, relocating itself somewhere, doing mem set, lots and lots of stuff before actually it reaches you name. So there's quite a lot of packets. I don't know, let's calculate how many packets. Like 8,000 packets for the simple you name applications that just basically just makes a single printf. So we need to find where is our you name is here in this trace. So we, we basically get a call trace of entire scene Here it is. So this is probably libc runtime underscore start of the uname. And here is we jump it to the main function of the uname. So it does some work like print. So the uname is called print uname. And some offset from and print your name, so does it work? And that is it, it's done. <laughs> so it makes a single print and just close. But we had to do lots and lots of stuff in the runtime linker. So what else we could do? We could actually see the row trace because this is already decoded stuff. So there's quite a lot of data in our trace. There's lots of atom packets that contains that bit I told about. Basically bit if the branch is taken or not taken. So this is more like row trace. It's still decoded, but it's, it's not in a human readable form, I think. And obviously, we can configure the score site. We could hide this easily hackable. We could uh, just open the core site.c and uh, maybe enable, disable some packet types and uh, configure it for the our case, like when we are debugging on or looking for some issue in the software that uh, we are using. 
and we can also trace the kernel. So we could specify that we want to trace CPU zero. And we want to uh, trace kernel, and let's say we want to trace CPU switch function. So tracing units only enabled the IP range of CPU switch. And here's lots and lots of CPU switches happens by CPU zero. So this is kind of interesting and uh, helpful framework because I didn't do any modifications to the, uh, to the software. I didn't make any changes to the CPU switch, right, to see this information. And uh, as you see, there is timestamp packets around every CPU switch call. So we could actually see how much time the CPU switch take, taken, right? We could just uh, take this value, take this value, subtract, and we could see how much time we spend in every single CPU switch. And we could see the places in the CPU switch where the control flow changes to, like 74, then it's go to B8 and 7C. So basically about five branches. Uh, what else? So this uh, tool allows you to store raw trace into the file or decode the trace into the file. There are some options, not many, but there is something that is already helpful. But I think uh, uh, we kind of need to improve this, maybe uh, to make some histograms or something like allowing us to see how much time every single function is called, for example. We already can do this by using so like shell scripts, like you know, sort unique, all that stuff, and uh, uh, see which function in our application called the most. But if you make like more uh, options to the HDLT and uh, teach HDLT to do that, that will be even better. So that is it. Any questions? <clears throat> no one understand anything? <laughs> Thank you very much for this one. Oh, we have one? All right. <clears throat> Come in. Uh, those timestamps look to be in hex. Were those nanoseconds? I think this, uh, uh, like, how's it called in GIFs? Like, the clock. I, I think they are in a clock. Uh, in a clock unit. So, whatever you know, generic timer of ARM64 operates with, like, uh, I think yeah, I think maybe CPU cycles. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ruslan. <clears throat>